difference in political, religious, or both? And does the fact that you are a church, do you think, makes a difference in how these arguments should be viewed in terms of free speech? Well, I don't do politics, so they're never political. But when I stand before court, I make religion, or I mean, I make legal arguments when I stand before court. When I go out and talk to the nation on the streets, I address myself to what the scriptures have to say. Now, it's a little, you know, when you're talking about the legal issues, you have to put the core message in there. But this isn't about politics. This is about this nation and its relationship with God. So, given the forum, I'll focus on either the law or the religion. Do you think that you, the fact you are a church provides any special protection given the, uh, the, separ the explicit well, uh, separation of yeah, church and state? I, of course, separation of church and state means that the government keeps its mitts off of our religion, and they would do well to remember that. But as far as you know, the First Amendment covers both speech and religion. So in that measure, we are twice protected in what we do to whatever you know, difference that may make to the SCOTUS. Can you recap your position on why these events, these funerals, are indeed public events? Well, the main reason we say they're public events is because we're at them and we see what goes on. We see that as we come pulling up at our distance, there are thousands of people outside from every walk of life sounding off flags, music, signs, every manner of politician and public official that you can imagine speaking they turn it into a noisy, splashy, political, patriotic pep rally. All this talk about God and the dying soldiers out on the public airwaves. What could be more public than what I just described? Tell me why your group has decided to target today East Lansing High School. Well, of course, we go to high schools all over the country because that is a generation where every teacher, preacher, leader, parent, and journalist has lied to them and told them that the commandments of God are subject to negotiation or debate. Now the reason it's East Lansing today, the reason those are the lucky kids today who get to hear the truth for the first time in their lives is because we're in the area. What would you say to some critics who might say to you, not necessarily your, me your message, but your methods yeah, yeah. are as simple yeah, yeah. as the action to Christ? Yeah, yeah. What, what method would get the attention of this nation? You know what? The stinking theater called Doomed America is on fire. It's time to lift up your voice and scream, run from the fire. I don't know any method that would have you stand in here talking to me, and it's the quintessential American way. Hit the public airwaves, and that's what we do. Critics argue that you're in this, and I've heard this, that you're in this for the money because you try to provoke violence and then sue yeah. people. Well, you know, I'm always so torn when I hear that because I don't mind that lie circulating because it causes people to keep their hands off of us. But can you imagine we've done 44,500 pickets as many times as we've been threatened and had stuff thrown at us and people try to steal them. Can you imagine we wouldn't get anything done chasing that all around? We are in courts when we are drug into courts, kicking and screaming, and as one of my friends put it, watching us, said we're aggressively defensive. When
kind of detail that you heard today about each soldier spread all over the public airways. Not a single iota of the life, death, funeral, or aftermath kept private in 98% of the cases. On rare occasion, family does in fact keep the matter private. And of course, we're not there. And we watched politicians as the keynote speakers at funerals. We watched the media writing thousands of words, all a one-sided dialogue. We watched the military turn those funerals into patriotic pep rallies so that forget about what is going on with respect to the funeral. When you go to Oklahoma, and there's a famous photograph out there now, of the governor up at the front of the crowd in the gymnasium of the high school with the entire audience focused on his political speech while the coffin is sitting back forgotten, the dead soldier back at the back at the end of the bleachers. Forgotten. And the guy took a picture of that and put it in a photo essay and got sued for invasion of privacy and intentional infliction of emotional distress and the Tenth Circuit shut him down and said what was private about that event. What was private about that event? So we watched that for three years. The great outpouring of sorrow and woe on this nation. These, your fruit being cut off. Coming home and little three dollar IEDs by dirt poor insurgents bringing the superpower to its knees and no one to the top levels of the Pentagon had a single answer. And we said, this is wrong. Somebody has got to say, if you stop sinning, they'll stop dying. And we say that from that day to this day, with the full understanding that like the attorney representing the father in the Snyder case told the jury as he sent them on that runaway mischief, 10.9 million against a little church, 70 of them against 300 million. He was off by 10. There's 310 million people in this country. He's right. 70 of them, 70 of us, against 310 million. We get that. We understand that. The fact is, there is a necessity laid on the hearts of the members of this church to go out to those public events that you have made public events and answer your public dialogue about where this nation is headed with God and with this war. Now, you, you raise your right hand to that flag every day all over this country, and you pledge allegiance to that flag. And the next line in your pledge is, and to the republic for which it stands. The young generation doesn't even know what that republic is anymore. Here's the essence of it. It's called the First Amendment. And John Leland made sure John Madison put it in there so that the mob rule could not shut up the dissenting voice. Do you think all these words about heroism, do they need the First Amendment in this country? Of course not. Now today, and this is what we told the Supreme Court, today, you're about 250 years into this experiment that you call a republic. Today we find out, can a little discussion about your sin bring your republic to its knees? We're going to find out if you really meant it. You can get that First Amendment and wave it happily for every kind of talk about your sin, every kind of talk about the filth that you find, about any kind of seditious talk, pornography. Call the roll and there's a level of First Amendment speech. There was never a suggestion in the Snyder case that our speech is low value speech. And in fact, all the courts have said the opposite. You'll even protect low value speech. We'll protect crush video. Now here's the question. A few words by a little church that you all love to hate. Is that going to bring your First Amendment to its knees? And that's what the SCOTUS case was about. And so early on in the arguments, Justice Breyer pinned it right down. That father and no one going into that funeral saw or heard our seven little pickers, one of them being this little guy in the orange shirt up front here three adults, four children, left when the funeral started. Out of sight, out of sound, 
did then and never have in the nearly 600 out of 44,500 pickets that we've done. About 600 of them have been these soldiers' funerals, and not in one of them did we disrupt a blessed thing. And we leave when the funeral starts, we don't go near the burial, we don't go near the family, we don't block anything, we don't try to stop anything, we peacefully, lawfully, quietly, at a significant distance, put some words in the air that you can avert your eyes if you don't want to see. So Justice Breyer says, this case isn't about invading, this isn't about invading any privacy. You're out on the public sidewalk. This is about some words that the father saw on the TV station and on the internet with which he disagreed. And now you heard from one of the panelists today that still today, the words on the sign are deemed hurtful. What's the time, place, and manner, ladies and gentlemen? If we can say these words, you never want to shut us down. The fact is, we obey the laws of God, we obey the laws of man. I have familiarized myself for the church with all of the body of First Amendment law of the United States Supreme Court, and we stay well within it. Congress didn't act once unanimously about this church, not twice, three times. They've passed laws about us, and it's 42 states, and it includes Maryland, and it's 150 feet in Maryland. <clears throat> Every law they pass has no impact on us, because we stay further away than any of the laws they pass. So the fact is, this has nothing to do with invading any privacy. And the only way you get to outrage and hurtful is content. Now, the Supreme Court has got a fundamental bedrock principle of what you all have to decide as a nation. Are you ready to rip this up for everybody to shut us up? And this is the bedrock principle. You may not take a subjective word like dignity, like outrage, like offense, and say, I subjectively claim some emotional hurt, some adverse languages, adverse emotional impact <clears throat> under that subjective umbrella. So you get to pay me $10.9 million when you get to go out to the Who's cow, as we call it. No, that is the essence of the First Amendment in this country. One man's hurtful words is another man's hope for eternal life. Now, if all 310 million of you don't want eternal life, and you want to invest everything in this vain speck called your life, you do that. But if you shut us up, you all have to shut up. Because anybody who says they're mourning or grieving, anybody dead could turn the TV on or the internet on or pass you on the sidewalk to hear you say something. They say, accept oh, them. Pretty soon, we're all just going to have to shut up and bow down. That's what the case is about. 